Okay, I want to recall something from way back at the beginning of this course, or if you're watching just the videos, way back earlier in the videos in the playlist list for multivariable calculus, is we had this vector form of a curve. And the idea is this is another way of parametrizing the curve with a vector valued function instead of a list of parametric equations. And it goes like this. We have R and its domain is this interval A to B, and that could be the whole real line. Obviously, maybe you'd have a parentheses there instead of brackets. And then, and then that goes into Rn. And usually we're looking at R2 or R3. And R has these component functions, x1, x2, all the way up to xn. But it only has one variable, and that's t. And that's because we only have one possibility for an input because our domain is a subset of the real numbers, which is one-dimensional. So the real way that you want to think about this is we've got our real line here, so I put it like a number line, and I have my interval A to B on that real line, and what this vector function is really doing is it's taking that interval on the real line and it's curving it around in a higher dimensional space. So here I've drawn a picture in R2, but you could imagine a picture in R3 or R4 or Rn in general. So just to reiterate, the idea that we're looking at here is this function r, it takes an interval on the real line and it curves it into a one-dimensional curve into a higher dimensional space. And so we want to slightly generalize that to do the same thing with surfaces. In other words, we want to start out with some sort of set in R2 but instead of having an interval, because there's no real notion of an interval here, we want just some uh, random shaped set in R2, so I'll call it D, and it'll have that shape. And we want some kind of function, I'll call it R again, that takes this patch in R2 to a surface in R3. Or really we could have it in any higher dimensional space as well, but we'll just stick with R3. And so let's say maybe uh, the surface looks like this. So it's maybe this little cap. Great. So now how would we do that? Well, we want to be inspired by what happened over here, but now notice that our domain has to have two inputs. And generally you call these U and V, and so we want to talk about what can you do to a random spot U comma V. Great. And then over here we have coordinates X, Y, and Z. So what happens is an arbitrary point U and V over here needs to be mapped up here to a, a point uh, X, U comma V, Y, U comma V, and then finally Z, U comma V, like that. Okay. So what this tells us is that this kind of setup will be given by the following type of function. So we have R, which goes from D into R3, and I should say here that D is a subset of R2, and generally we want this thing to be one-to-one -one as well, but you know, I won't really write that down. And what we have is we have two inputs over here, U comma V, and then we have three outputs. So we have X, U, V, Y, U, V, and Z, U, V. So just like what happened over here, where we took an object that was one-dimensional, a line segment, and curved, or curved it around to higher dimensional space, here we're taking a two-dimensional object which is flat, just like a one-dimensional object which is flat is a line segment, and what we're doing is we're curving that two-dimensional flat object into three dimensions or higher dimensions if you want to. And you might say, well, why stop here? And in fact, uh, we don't have to stop here, but that's generally where we stop um, in a multivariable calculus class. And we're actually really standing on the edge of a subject called differential geometry, um, where you take flat spaces in the domain and map them into uh, curved spaces in the codomain.
Okay, so now that uh, we have kind of our setup, I want to give a name to this. So this is called a parametric surface. with a domain of D, and I'll just point out that that's happening in R2. Now I want to go through some examples of these parametric surfaces. Um, I'll erase the board and then we'll do that. Okay, so for our first example, we'll parametrize a sphere of radius 2. In other words, we'll find one of these functions which maps from a subset of R2 into R3 where the range is the sphere of radius 2. So we want to take inspiration um, by spherical coordinates. Just like whenever we uh, parametrize circles, we take inspiration of polar coordinates. So here, let's write this down. Our inspiration here is spherical coordinates. And so let's just recall the change of variables into spherical coordinates works like this. So x equals rho uh, cosine theta sine phi. Uh, y equals rho uh, sine theta sine phi, and then finally z equals rho cosine phi. And uh, just if you recall real quick, rho is the distance away from the origin, theta is the angle in the xy plane from the positive x-axis going counterclockwise, and phi is the angle from the positive z-axis going down. So I've got a video on uh, spherical coordinates if you need to brush up on that if you if you need to brush up on that. Okay, so, but the real thing to hone in on here is we just want like the crust of a sphere of radius two, which means uh, we're gonna set rho equal to two in this setup. And that is going to give us two variables, and will be theta and phi. So that, that's gonna give us the following uh, vector equation for our sphere. So we've got r, it depends on theta and phi, and in the first co uh, coordinate, it's gonna be two cosine theta sine phi, then it'll be two sine theta uh, sine phi, and then finally it'll be a two cosine phi. So there's our parameterization of the sphere of radius 2. Um, and now let's maybe get a picture of what's going on here. Well first of all what is our domain going to be? So we want to draw the entire sphere so that means we want to take theta values from 0 to 2 pi. I'll cut it off at 2 pi so that it's 1 to 1. Cross we want to take phi values again to make the whole sphere uh, from uh, 0 to pi. So that is the positive z-axis down to the negative z-axis. Um, okay, great. And then uh, notice that's going to give us the following picture. Over here in the theta phi plane, we just have this kind of rectangle. So it's going to be 0 to 2 pi. So I'll put that right there. And then it'll be dotted because I do not include that. And it'll be 0 to pi. So it's this region right here, which I'll call D. Okay, so that's what's happening over here in the theta phi plane, but then this is mapping via R to the x, y, z uh, three space, and it ends up giving us this sphere of radius two. So let's see, we can draw that sphere and then maybe we'll point out that it has radius uh, two by calling that two right there. Okay, great. So just like what's happening over here, it's taking a flat one-dimensional object, curving it into two-dimensional space. We've got a flat two-dimensional object, this rectangle, and it's curving it around into this sphere. Okay, great. So um, I'll erase the board and then we'll look at another two examples or so. Okay, so for our next example, we want to parameterize a cylinder with radius 3 and a height of 5. Okay, so here, just like before, we took inspiration from spherical coordinates. Now we're going to take inspiration from cylindrical coordinates. So we'll write that down. So inspired by cylindrical 
coordinates. So let's just go ahead and recall what cylindrical coordinates are. So we have x equals r cosine theta, uh, y equals r sine theta, and then z equals z. So I often don't call these cylindrical coordinates because it's really just a polar coordinate system crossed with a Euclidean coordinate system. But that's kind of neither here nor there. Um, okay, so, but here we don't want the entire three space. Cylindrical coordinates will give us the entire three space. We want to fix in on a cylinder with radius three. So that means we want to set the radius equal to three at all times. And furthermore, we want the height to be five. So that means we might as well take Z going from zero to five. Okay, good. So now uh, what is left as our variable? So now R is no longer a variable, but theta and Z are variables. So let's see what we've got going on here. We can write this down pretty easily. So we have R of theta comma Z equals, so that's going to give us 2 cos theta, uh, 2 sine theta comma Z. And then, uh, what's our domain? So notice this thing is going to take uh, theta values from 0 to 2 pi, cross z values from 0 to 5, and then it's going to take it into R3. So again, let's look at our picture. So in the uh, theta z plane, we have this picture, so we have theta values up to 2 pi, so not including 2 pi, so I'll make that dotted. We have z values up to 5, including 5, so we have this rectangle right here, okay? And then what this is doing is it's wrapping this rectangle into a cylinder of radius uh, 5, so the picture goes like this, so here this function is giving us the following picture. So there's our x, y, z, three space like this. And we have a circle of radius three down here. So let's maybe point out that this is uh, radius three. And then going up like this, maybe we'll dot that out so that we can see it's in the background. And then maybe we'll point out that this point up here is z equals five. So what is happening is this rectangle is getting wrapped around into that cylinder. Um, okay, good. So I'll erase the board and then we'll look at two more. Okay, so for our next example, we want to look at this. So let's say we've got a surface that's already been parametrized. We want to get an idea for what it looks like. So it has the equation u cosine v, u sine v, and u squared. So those are the component functions. And then it maps from r cross 0 to 2 pi to r3. Okay, so the idea here is you want to eliminate the parameters and so it's maybe best to write this as parametric equations so that we can see the extra variables x y and z here that uh, can be used to maybe eliminate these parameters so here we'll have u is cosine v uh, y is equal to uh, u sine v and then finally uh, z is equal to u squared and so this one is not hidden very much because notice if we do cosine squared plus sine squared we get 1, but that means if we do x squared plus y squared we get u squared times the quantity cosine squared plus sine squared, um, which is obviously u squared itself, which is equal to z. So what that tells us is we get the surface which has the equation z equals x squared plus y squared. And I think maybe you'll recall from much earlier in the course, uh, this is a upward facing paraboloid. So this has uh, the following shape, like that. So it opens like a circle. Okay, so the one thing that could go wrong here is, well, maybe we don't get the whole paraboloid given the fact um, that we're restricting the domain to r cross 0 to 2 pi. Um, but we actually do get the whole paraboloid because if we're taking 0 to 2 pi, we're getting all possible outputs of cosine and sine. 
And um, notice we only need a positive R values because uh, we're squaring X and Y in this case. Um, and uh, we only get things above the z-axis. Okay, so let's maybe look at what's happening in the UV plane just to finish this picture off. So here we have UV. So notice U can take on all real number values and V can only take on number values between 0 and 2 pi. So here on the z-axis we go from 0 up to 2 pi and then we dot along here because we're not including that but then you were taking on all values so that means our picture over here is this infinite strip so this parameterization given by this equation up here takes this infinite strip and it uh, folds it into that paraboloid um, okay good so uh, we'll do one more short example and then we'll be done Okay, so for our last example, we'll link all of this back to surfaces of the form z equals f of xy, which is an important thing to do because that really shows us that we're generalizing something that we've done before. So if we've got the surface z equals f of xy, how can we parameterize that? Well, we can take our parameters, first of all, to be just x and y. So that's simple, and then that's going to allow us to make um, R of XY equal, so notice X is just going to be itself and Y is just going to be itself, and then finally Z is going to be F of XY. But now if you're not super psyched about this and you want to introduce new parameters so that it looks a little different, you can just uh, replace X with U and Y with V, and here we'll get U, V, F of U, V. And that's the same kind of thing. Um, okay, and that's a good place to stop.